this is Randall with CropWithGotTraining.com and in this video I'm going to discuss the horizontal elbow being delivered uh, behind you or what's more commonly referred to as elbow number three in the uh, CropWithGot system of elbows. In particular with this elbow I'm going to discuss the defensive components or aspects of this particular elbow. Now with this particular elbow uh, most uh, beginner students don't have too many problems with it. However, the most common thing that I see that is neglected with this particular elbow is that defensive aspect of it. And let me discuss what that is. So that guy's behind me, extremely close to me. I realize that. I look over my shoulder, realize their face is there. Boom, I hit them. But the defensive part is my shoulder is supposed to be up nice and high. I take my chin, bury it down, keep my hand nice and close. You can see I kind of created, if I was to do this elbow towards the camera, you see how I'm protecting my face and my jaw from a potential strike as I'm rotating towards the uh, attacker to deliver that elbow. That's the defensive component to the strike. Now this is what most beginners tend to do, is they're so focused on just the elbow itself, the offensive aspect of hitting the pad, they tend to do this. Notice how my chin's up nice and high, my face is wide open, I'm just asking to be hit back by the bad guy. So not like this, like this. So in addition to the shoulder coming high, keeping the chin low and the elbow high, one thing I like to do is I like to bend my knees a little bit, get a little bit lower. Because if you stand real tall, it's a little bit harder to, to keep, keep all that defensive parts uh, in check. If I crunch down a little bit, as I deliver the strike, I'm going to be a lot safer. So that's a really key point to make sure when you're practicing it, your training partner, if, if they're holding the pad for you, if you have a training partner, ask them to uh, keep an eye to make sure that you're keeping your chin down and your shoulder up. If you are getting a little lax about that, that should remind you to do that. Now, uh, as of the state that I'm filming this, a real uh, shitty uh, trend that's happening in the world is what's referred to as the knockout game. If you're not familiar with that, what it is is just a bunch of dipshits. They like to uh, sneak up behind someone and basically try to hit them as hard as they can with one shot with the goal of trying to knock them out while the boys are in the background laughing and, and watching or even worse, one of their shithead friends has got a camera filming it so they uh, can uh, all do this for their personal enjoyment of these sick bastards. But anyways, I've been watching a lot of those uh, surveillance films and those films that are on YouTube of people getting sucker punched uh, with this uh, knockout game. And the most common way that the uh, thugs are doing this is that Let's say, here's the innocent bystander, just you know, some person minding their own business, some poor lady or whatever. The bad guy, I'll pretend to be the bad guy, sneaks up behind them and does this. Wow! They sneak up behind them and they throw this big ass hook or this big ass haymaker and end up clipping the uh, innocent person who, who doesn't even know what's going on right in the side of the jaw. And if you watch any boxing matches, you or if you watch any of those uh, uh, films that are or videos that are on YouTube about the knockout game, if they get hit like this, the head gets snapped back, the brain gets slammed up inside the skull, and when that happens, it causes concussion, and, and that poor uh, victim uh, ends up unconscious, laying on the ground at the mercy of, of these people. And who knows what happens after that. If they're lucky, the thugs will just walk off, the worst case scenario, they're going to get robbed, or, 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 or even worse, that's going to happen. So with that in mind, if you don't want that shit to happen to you, don't neglect the defensive part of this. So yeah, just because I'm, the guy's behind me and I'm, I'm hitting with the elbows doesn't mean that he's not hitting back. Yeah, I'm, I'm training on a target like this, but I, and when I'm training, I'm assuming this would be a real person. Well, I don't want to be like this, leaving myself wide open. I want to be like this so I don't, I don't have that uh, particular uh, punch coming around me. Also, when my shoulder's up, my chin's down, it also protects my neck my throat, so I'm less vulnerable in case they, instead of just punching me, they're trying to choke me uh, like this or with their hands. It's going to just protect you in general because this whole area around here it has a lot of uh, a vulnerable, vital points to my life. If I get hit in any of these aspects or get choked, there's a good chance I'm going to get injured uh, very easily. So I need to keep the shoulder up, chin down as I deliver the strike. Now, one problem that does come up, and this concern does come up, and it's legitimate that students ask, especially if they're a, a taller student, and their training partner shorter, and the, or the target shorter. Their question is, well, if let's say if I want to hit this this target right here in the body, or because or maybe let's pretend his face is is down here because he's a shorter person in relation to me. How am I supposed to deliver this elbow strike, still hit the target, and still keep my chin down? Well, I'm going to give you two suggestions. 
One is, I already brought it up, which is to change your levels. So let's say I want to throw this elbow, instead of hitting him in the face, I want to hit him more in the throat or the chest. If I do it normally and stay up tall, I'm leaving my face open. If I bend my knees, drop my level, as I'm doing the strike, notice how I can still hit a lower target, but I'm still keeping my uh, chin and face protected as I'm delivering. So as I do the strike, notice how I'm changing levels. I'm starting a little bit taller as I turn, now I'm a little bit shorter. That's, one that, that's the easiest way to fix it. The second way that you can do it is you can adjust the trajectory a little bit of the elbow strike and that you can arc it down. And this is what I mean. Like this. So before, notice how my arm is nice and horizontal. That would be the uh, textbook way to deliver the strike. But maybe I want to hit the target a little bit lower. Maybe I, I can't get any lower with my body. I can arc it down. But when I arc it down, notice how my hand, my shoulder, my chin are still all protected. So if I do it towards the camera, not like this, see I'm leaving myself open, like this. I'm arcing it down a little bit, but I'm saying I'm still protecting myself. So that's another way that you can adjust the elbow, yet still protect yourself as you're doing the strike. So my preferred method is to change levels, but you can arc the uh, elbow down slightly as well. Anyway, so those are my suggestions for uh, maintaining good defensive aspects to this elbow. Uh, make sure that you do it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's the most neglect neglected aspect of this elbow. So if you want to be uh, uh, good and safe while you're doing this elbow, make sure that you don't neglect it. Thank you for watching.